guys, it's Vanille and welcome to today's video and welcome to another WWE reaction. This video was recommended by me, Temsu, and he said, please, can you react to different versions of Randy Orton by wrestling flashback? I would love you to react to it. I did find a video ranking the 13 versions of Randy Orton from worst to best by wrestling flashback. If you are interested in checking the original video, head there. If you are interested into my reaction, stick around. <laughs> From legend killer to legend, Randy Orton's longevity and tenure is unmatched. He has remained a constant in WWE for over 20 years. Wrestling was in his blood and destiny was in his future. It's often been said that if you could build a professional wrestler from the ground up, you would get Randy Orton. We'll find out just why that statement rings true today as we look back and rank the various personas right, let's see. and numerous different versions of Randy Orton. Number 13, Rookie Orton, 2002 to 2003. Orton's wrestling career began in WWE's development Territory. So are you trying to tell me this is how he looked like the first day he began wrestling? <gasps> like that is mind blowing. He already looked like a superstar. Sheesh. Ohio Valley Wrestling. Having spent two years learning the craft, he was eventually promoted to the WWE main roster in April 2002. His first matches saw him wrestle the likes of Hardcore Holly, Test, and Lance Storm. Whoa. Naturally, Orton was quite rough around the edges when he first debuted. However, he was put in what? matches against experienced wrestlers who helped show him the ropes. One of the first obstacles Orton had to conquer was his nerves. His opponents could tell how nervous Randy was based on Aww. how he looked walking to the ring. Hardcore Holly was yeah, the first like to notice heavily. and offered Orton valuable advice. The highlight of Orton's first year in the WWE came when he wrestled The Undertaker for the Undisputed <sighs> Championship. Taker was incredibly giving during the match, offering Already? Orton a big chance to shine. So much so that after the match, Vince McMahon questioned the dead man's decision to give the rookie so much offense. The Undertaker! The Undertaker! Orton jumped ship to Raw in September of 2002, but almost immediately suffered a shoulder injury. Randy oh, stayed no. on television though, and appeared on Raw live from Montreal in the sling, where he cut his first heel promo. Unlike Bret Hart, Randy Orton will be back. Thank you. Over the next few the months, boost. Orton appeared in RNN segments, giving frequent updates on his condition. These skits allowed Orton to slowly develop as a heel, giving fans just enough reason to dislike him. The injury proved to be a blessing, yeah. as it allowed Orton to shed his initial white meat babyface rookie persona in favor of a more cocky, arrogant character that was soon ready to take further advantage of his third generation heritage. Number 12, WWE and United States Champion, 2017 to 2018. After Orton's feud with Bray Wyatt in 2017, Orton was was used to try and help establish Jinder his... Mahal as a viable WWE champion. Orton That's lost true. the title to Mahal at Backlash in a massive upset Austria. that shocked fans. Oh, oh the colossus! Oh, she got him! Do we have it? You're kidding me! You're kidding me! Orton tried his best to get Mahal over as a champion, but it was always going to be hard for the audience to buy someone as world champion, who had largely been an enhancement talent for the majority of their WWE Oi. career. After losing three times to Mahal, Orton feuded with Rusev. During this feud, Orton once that again highlighted so his ability to him. take the RKO out of nowhere, doing so numerous times in a variety of different ways. Here, English from the second nice. At the start of 2018, Orton looked to capture the only title he had yet to win in WWE, the United States Championship. Orton won the belt at Fastlane, defeating Bobby Roode. This made Orton the 18th Grand Slam champion in WWE Yay. history. But the Viper only held the championship for a month, as Orton would lose yet another title nice. to Jinder Mahal. This time, Dude, in a Mahal. Match at WrestleMania 34. Do people really want to see Mahal win? Or is this just like a shame ride for Orton to humble him down or something? What is going on? It was a shame to see Orton lose the title so quickly, yeah. as it would have been great to see such a top-level main eventer like Randy elevate the belt just as rival John Cena Ooh. had done on Raw in 2015. Agree. All in all, the one-year period from the spring of 2017 to 2018 was one to forget for Orton. He had little to sink his teeth into, character or storyline-wise. The one saving grace was the fact that he was able to win a title he was yet to capture. But Orton's US Championship reign was so short, it never really had a chance to get off the ground. Number 11, Youngest World Champion, 2004. Fresh 
off his highly successful reign as the Intercontinental Champion, the WWE believed Orton was ready to take the next step in becoming a main event player. After winning Oof. a 20-man battle royal on Raw, Orton became the number one contender for Chris Benoit's World Heavyweight Championship. The two clashed at SummerSlam in a stellar match, where Orton captured his first world title, becoming WWE's youngest ever world champion in the process. The youngest nice. world champion in WWE history. At just 24 years old and with only two years under his belt on the main roster, it begged the question as to whether Orton was truly ready to be world champion. And while even Randy agrees Logan it was Paul too soon, the, the way no, he was booked not, as champion certainly didn't help matters. Things started older. off well with a brilliant rematch versus Benoit on Raw that was followed by Orton being kicked out of Evolution in a famous segment. <laughs> Randy then cemented himself as a babyface the next week by spitting in the face of oh. Triple H in another classic moment. But Orton lost the <laughs> and world like, title to Triple H is on Triple H. Despite putting up a strong fight, and while losing the title after just one month was bad enough, Orton's rematch at the 2005 Royal Rumble added insult to injury, not just because of the loss, but due to the way Orton was defeated. <laughs> Randy was beaten cleanly after trying to use the game's patented sledgehammer. Orton's babyface run had been a bust. He had lost the killer instinct that made him such a great villain as the legend killer. You While his fellow evolution can't member Batista had begun to get over with the fans more organically. Orton has always said how much he prefers playing the role of a heel. And perhaps yeah. his initial failed babyface run of has something to do. do with that. Especially given how much it paled in comparison to his previous heel run. As well as the subsequent one that was to follow. Number 10. Wyatt Family Member. 2016 mm. to 2017. Orton returned from injury in the summer of 2016 becoming a member of the Smackdown roster at that year's summer Sam he featured in a memorable but controversial match against Brock Lesnar Bones trying to bust up your opponent That's oh, a look at the ending to this match was so violent it even had Chris Jericho wondering if the finish oh, was planned or not oh leading God. to an altercation oh my God YQ so that's the match that is the match I hate that's one scene of like all that blood literally just sipping. Like, he lost so much blood there. Like, I understand sometimes when they do that. But this is, like, the mo one of the most extreme cases that I have seen. And thankfully, every time I have seen it, it was black and white for me. It is hard. It is definitely hard to see stuff like that. UJ and Lesnar backstage. From there, Orton began a feud with Bray Wyatt, which eventually led to Orton mm. joining the Wyatt family. Okay. I'm joining. Oh, that's Orton's so addition cool to the group wasn't really a good fit. Although we did oh, manage no. to capture the tag titles during this time, fans were more eager to see the moment Orton eventually turn on Wyatt. Orton's yeah. objective was to destroy the Wyatts from the mm. inside. This plan fit his character oh, as it's only yeah. a matter of time before the Viper strikes after all. However, this storyline just dragged on for too long since Orton and Wyatt were booked to go all the way up until after WrestleMania. During his time in the Wyatt family, Orton was able to elevate Luke Harper. However, WWE subsequently failed to capitalize on Harper's momentum. Orton's turn on Bray was done in unique circumstances as Orton burned down the Wyatt family compound resulting in a cool looking visual. The whole thing? Whoa, I thought this is like a scene. The payoff to the feud saw Orton and Wyatt Undertaker. wrestle two bizarre matches. Mm. First at WrestleMania 33, where Orton beat Bray for the WWE Championship. Then came the House of Horrors match at Payback. This concept had potential, so but it cool. wasn't executed well and absolutely ah. died in front of the live audience who were forced to watch no, the No, maybe the camera the shake. Tron. Overall, Orton's time with the Wyatts won't be looked back on too fondly. Sure, there were some bright sparks, like the matches with Luke Harper, so as well this as Orton one of the, the Royal Rumble, and then the WWE title at WrestleMania. Sad. But all in all, the storyline lasted longer than it needed to. Fans okay. would have preferred to see Orton get another shot at Brock Lesnar, while for Bray, a feud with Luke Harper likely would have had more legs, given okay. their built-in story. Number right. 9, I Rated get it. RKO, 2006-2007. Rated After Orton RKO. made the jump back to Raw in the middle of 2006, he linked up with Edge to form Rated RKO. The the two were paired together to act as credible opponents for DX, resulting in a memorable feud during which Orton and Edge captured the World Tag Team title. Oh my god, they belong together! I love this! The feud came to a premature Oof. end after Triple H tore his quad at New Year's Revolution 2007. Mm. Then, after dropping the tag belts to the team of Shawn Michaels and John Cena, Rated RKO began to fizzle out, with the two split Aww. for good following a singles match against each other on Raw. This came the night after they wrestled in an epic fatal four-way for the WWE Championship at Backlash. Contact.
Orton and Edge both had big personalities. Their characters meshed together they well do. in the beginning, yeah. but it was only a matter of time before their egos clashed. It didn't lead Oi. to a pay-per-view singles match, though, as Edge was moved to SmackDown following injuries to Mr. Kennedy and The Undertaker. The run with Edge benefited Orton as it allowed Randy to mix it up against Triple H and Shawn Michaels again, with Orton okay. an even better wrestler than he was two years prior. What the hell is this? Oh. During the feud, Orton's history with both wrestlers was played up, which became even more relevant when Orton worked against both Hunter and Sean in a singles feud the next year. Rated RKO had great chemistry together on screen, while behind the scenes, Edge helped keep Randy in check after the tough year Orton had just endured. Rated RKO's run was short, and while it did lose some steam after Triple H's injury, the team created some great television. <laughs> and their Ouch. pairing was keen steering Orton back in the right direction after the problems he'd been experiencing in his personal life. Number eight, Apex Predator. What, 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 what problems? After a feud with fellow legacy members, Rose and DiBiase, Orton continued his face run, deciding to change his look to freshen things up. The Viper stopped I wearing wristbands for, for a few him. months. A look that surprised fans seen as how odd Randy looked with nothing on his arms. 2010 wasn't a great uh, year for the WWE. And the that's same can be said for look. Orton. It looks like the shorter hair. <laughs> He remained consistent in the ring, but from a promo and character perspective, the there was side, nothing to write home totally about. The same can be said for the feuds he was in. Orton was over as a face, but he once again lacked that killer instinct oh, and this. vicious nature that made him so great as a heel. And given some of the horrendous things he did as a heel, it was going to be hard to top this as a face. However, yep. in 2011, Orton was able to find a greater balance between his characters. The punt kick was brought back due to necessity, since Randy had to fight off an entire stable on his own in Nexus during his feud with CM Punk. And as we'd seen in the years prior, in order to <laughs> CM Punk there looked like a queen and he's like just sitting and waiting for them to put Randy Orton on his back so he just can't perform the final move. Okay. Orton had to go to that place in his head easy where the voices easy, were. Lemon the squeezy. menace was back, this time as a baby face. Do not punt him! It made sense and he this was did the it. only way the Apex Predator was going to be able to take out Nexus. From the deranged look on mm. Randy's face, you could just tell when the voices were taking oh over. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I love this, I love this for him so much. And picked off each Nexus he has the craziest look one, ever. Week by week until Punk was the only one left. Last week, and now, and now yes! We wouldn't see Orton snap like this again until his feud with Christian in the summer. Okay. Go Christian again! Oh! The feud had been very much one-sided on Orton's behalf until the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. There, the stipulation was such Wait, that Orton Christian could lose the world title via disqualification. Previously, there. Christian That's had crazy. lost the title match to Orton, despite the fact Captain Charisma's foot was under the rope during the deciding cover. This led to Christian turning heel and constantly demanding one more match. At Money in the mm. Bank, Christian riled up Randy so much to the point where Orton hit a low blow, which caused the DQ. You gotta calm down. No! no! Bye bye, the fact Randy. That being spat on was the final straw for Orton was fitting, given the countless legends Orton had to spit in the face of as the hmm. legend killer. The feud with Christian played on Orton's past struggles to control his anger. Christian spitting in the Viper's face hmm. was enough to send Orton over the edge, as he absolutely destroyed Christian Why following so much the conclusion spitting? to their match at Money in the Bank. Oh my god! In the following weeks, Christian what? continued to try and make the Viper lose his cool. It was brilliant to see Orton unleash this side of his character as a babyface. It's something the company can always go back to and have since done following this. We all know the Viper can strike at any moment, but it's rarer to see the more sinister side yeah. of Orton. The violent, sadistic menace with anger management issues that we get to see only when the story calls for it. It's starting to make me angry. In 2011, we saw the okay. best version of Orton as a babyface. He was forced to channel the voices in his head in order to end Nexus once and for all. Then during his fantastic feud with Christian, we would again see just what happens when you send the Viper over the edge. Mm. Oh, that's a far to fall. Oh, no. But this is what we if need he's more. Face or heel, when Orton is made to go to that place, no one can stop him. And there yeah. is no telling the amount of damage he can do. It like, that's what I like about it. Like, even as a babyface, he would have this crazy look and he would go into that super crazy mode like i don't know what to call it like the ultimate you know and it doesn't matter if it's heel or or baby face like the agenda behind it matters but the execution doesn't
It's evident in 2011, not to mention 2009 and 2020, but more on those years later. Number seven, The Authority, 2013 to 2015. After a forgettable 2012 and first part of 2013, things picked up for Randy when he won the Money in the Bank ladder match. Orton successfully cashed in his Money in the Bank contract at SummerSlam 2013, following Daniel Bryan's victory against John Cena. Triple H would turn heel by pedigreeing Bryan, allowing Orton to pick up the scraps to become the new WWE champion. The next night on Raw, the authority would officially be born, with Orton and Triple H Aww. cementing their heel turns. This began Daniel Bryan's memorable chase for the WWE title, with Orton and the authority being the biggest obstacles in I Bryan's like way, that. as they constantly held him down. Ah. Orton in many ways took a back seat here despite being champion, as every Raw would begin with a Triple H and Stephanie McMahon promo. Orton was <laughs> positioned as the face of WWE, Too while much Bryan was considered face. a B-plus player. But you are a B-plus. The two headline numerous pay-per-views, although both the dusty finish at Night of Champions and then the non-finish at Battleground, left fans demanding refunds. Daniel, look out, look out! Ah. Big Show's insertion in the feud didn't help matters, especially given the fact that oh, Show no. even challenged Orton for the WWE title at Survivor Series, while Bryan was positioned in a feud against the Wyatts. Orton was able to defeat the Big Show, bringing back the punt kick for one night only. The problem was that the punt was nowhere near as powerful this time around, given Big mm. Show was able to wrestle the next night without issue. Orton's character yeah. during this period wasn't as much of a savage like he was previously, and would be again in the future. This meant the punt didn't have as much impact since it didn't fit Orton's persona as the corporate champion. He didn't need to go back to that sick place during this period, as the authority could give him anything he wanted, ensuring yeah. he stayed on top. As a member of the authority, Orton was a True. sellout, linking back up with his <gasps> former fierce rival, Triple H, in you order like to get sellouts. back to the top and stay there. Hunter and Stephanie did the brunt of the talking, while Randy represented their vision of what a top star should be. The fact that Daniel Bryan was the complete opposite of this helped make the story so thrilling. The yeah. fans didn't want to see like, it. Like, you always need... Not always, but there is like these cases when you have extremes, like you have blue versus red. Like it's always babyface versus heel. If it is executed that the babyface is 100 babyface and the heel is like 100 heel in that situation, that could be really awesome. I feel like these matches are really like a big contrast and it adds up to it anyone else but Brian as the WWE champion, but it would take some more time before the company eventually changed direction. Before that could happen, Orton met his old rival John Cena, defeating Oi. John in a unification match for both the World Heavyweight and WWE titles at TLC 2013. In the build-up to the match, Cena called John out Cena Orton is for like being handy everything, yet still making mistakes and being lazy. You've had behavior problems in the ring. You've had behavior problems outside the ring. Their rematch at the Royal Rumble was panned by the live crowd shit. due to the fans being tired of both characters. While the audience's oh, demand to see Daniel Bryan in the title picture was intensifying more and more, the fans would finally get their wish at WrestleMania 30, where Daniel Bryan featured in a triple threat match against champion Orton and Royal Rumble winner Batista. Bryan had to defeat Triple H first in order to secure his place in the main event, which he subsequently won to become the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Following WrestleMania, fans were treated to the return of Evolution as the faction went to war with the shield in two fantastic matches evolution put over ambrose Rollins, i think the shield came at the right Norton time in wwe during his singles what do you think reigns and rollins Roman reigns ahead of Steve Spear! The latter of which led to Orton leaving the authority and becoming a babyface again. Perhaps the most oh, famous yeah. moment of this face run took place Seth. at WrestleMania 31, when Orton delivered one of the greatest ever RKO's to Seth Rollins. So cool! A strong start to life as a face was followed up with a bland that feud with Sheamus. Cool. Orton later suffered a shoulder injury in the fall mm. of 2015 that would keep him out of action for nine months. Number six, nine months. Bro, 2021 oh, to 2022. That's a lot Following for WrestleMania WWE. 37, Orton was paired together with Matt Riddle in what started out as an odd couple tag team, but as the weeks and months progressed, they began to develop amazing chemistry together. As a team, yeah. the two created some very entertaining television, with the Viper warming up to Riddle more and more the longer they were a team. I don't know what planet you're from. I'm from Earth. Shut up. <laughs> Riddle was finally given some decent Ta -da. material to work with, but we got to see a different side of Orton. <sighs>
You could just tell how much fun they were having on screen together. Orton even credits his partnership so with Riddle as having revitalized his career to the point where Orton was having some of the most fun he's ever had working with Riddle. <laughs> and I have never had this much fun as I'm having right now in this ring with my partner. At the end of 2021, RK-Bro were arguably the highlight of Raw every week. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I love it because like one of them is so serious and the other one is so goofy. And like, you can see whenever this guy who is serious like once a serious moment the goofy one is like eee! like i will be the goofy one 100 and i know exactly how this feel like because i have serious people in my life and i always be i'm always like the goofy one around them and it's like yeah this is the face that i get all the time from various segments some of which featured inside references <laughs> relating to both men's use of marijuana there are Ooh, exactly this. 28 Rams and one outs. Thank you very much. Yes! That's it. <laughs> what the hell? The tag team titles twice, wrestling numerous oh, fantastic matches against the likes of the Street Profits and the Alpha Academy. RK Bro's tremendous run sadly came to an end when Orton was forced Aww. to take a step away from the ring due to a serious back injury. Oh, no, Orton again. and Riddle had a very memorable run together. What began Her as a thrown together back. tag team soon blossomed into a versatile duo that complemented each other so well. Yeah, but that's I want the thing. You yeah. To have this. What Orton can he do with that? <laughs> I would never see Orton on that. Character. The fact that Orton also loves to secretly get stoned made this even better. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. <laughs> The segments oh my were God, beloved by best, fans because honestly. of just how funny RK Bro's act was. Then once the bell rang, Orton and Riddle put in a hell of a shift, resting consistent high quality matches week in, week out. Number five, the age of Orton, 2007 to 2008. In 2007, Orton began Orton. to show a more dark side to his character. That reminds a key us of something. The element of this darker turn was Randy's use of the punt kick. It was suggested by Arn Anderson, who believed a straight boot to the skull was simple yet devastating. Come on, come on. Such a simple it move, being yeah. Just a wrestling move. It was so like the, the thing about what I don't like about this move compared to like the RKO. The RKO is smooth and quick, sudden and shocking. So the other wrestler cannot anticipate it and cannot dodge it in particular, at least like in the majority of the situations. Um, but with this move, like you can see a lot of times these wrestlers are like on all four, just waiting for him to run and kick. Like you have all the freaking time to dodge as long as you're like not the big guy or a slow guy or, or an old guy. Like you can dodge those, bro, like so easily. And like you can see sometimes even the wrestlers standing and like looking left, like like waiting and anticipate. And that's what I hate. Like I can notice these moments. And when I notice these ones, I'm like, ah, you got me out of it. Put over so well, the punt felt like a downright criminal assault. Anyone that was hit with it was taken off TV afterward as the punt kick quickly became Orton's most. Orton was ready to fight for the WWE Championship at SummerSlam 2007 against the man who would become Randy's greatest rival, John Cena. This was the first mm. pay-per-view match in their legendary oh, feud. They were the fresh chair. opponents and as the two faces of How the did they not get injured era, more with that chair? To tear the house down. Cena evaded the punt to hit the FU and capture the win. But this was only the start of a few that was about to become very personal. The night after SummerSlam, Orton performed one of his most heinous attacks to date by punting John Cena's father in the head. It was one <gasps> no! Of the best of all time. And you could just you feel don't do the that. Disrespect! <laughs> Oh my god, you feel it? That one. Oh my god, Orton that one is so legit. Injury by defeating Cena's dad in a match on Raw a few weeks later. But Cena Sr. got his revenge at Unforgiven by giving Randy a taste of his That's own medicine. That's not nice. Yes! Cena and Orton's feud <laughs> was put on hold before Orton oh my could get his big win. As Cena suffered a pectoral injury during a match with Mr. Kennedy, mm. Orton punished Cena afterward in an angle that inadvertently acted as a way of writing Cena off television to heal from his injury. <laughs> Cena then vacated yeah. the WWE Championship, but Orton was able to capture it for himself at no mercy by defeating the recently returning Triple H in a last man standing Imagine match. being the injured and having to like here, have another fight a devastating side just to, to have a story. And with a punt kick in his arsenal, Finish. Orton would go on to have one of the strongest ever title runs. His failed first world title run was a distant memory. This was a different, mm. more nefarious okay, Randy let's Orton. Hear you he still had out. elements of the legend killer in him, but Randy was able to combine that with a new mean streak that would only get wilder throughout the two years. Years. 
See how Orson smooth went into that WrestleMania is? 24 as WWE champion and came out of the show with the title still in possession, becoming one of the few heels to achieve such a feat at the show of shows. Orton was now more opportunistic. He was slowly transitioning into more of a predator, while the voices in his head nice. just couldn't be ignored. Number four, return to SmackDown 2005 to 2006. Orton cemented his heel turn in the spring of 2005 by RKOing Stacey Keebler. Randy had set his sights on The Undertaker in a bid to kill another legend and break The Undertaker's WrestleMania under oh. streak. I will defeat the Undertaker. No, you did not do this that. This began a classic rivalry you know who that did that? four great matches. The feud also Wasn't saw the you? return of Randy's father, Cowboy Bob Orton. Cowboy Bob helped Orton defeat Taker twice. He helped add to Orton's presentation and gave the legend killer a different dimension as it would have been difficult to buy Orton beating The Undertaker multiple times on his own at this stage mm, of his career. The highlight yeah. of the Orton-Taker rivalry came inside Hell in a Cell at Armageddon where Orton took the dead man to the limit but ultimately Oof. came up short. I yeah. Seen the female may have went over on the night, but Orton's That's crazy certainly got how over as a result. Is. The feud with Taker did wonders in elevating Orton, who was now rejuvenated, following a stuttering first Oof. world title reign. Oh, come on now, come on now! Oh my God! Come on now! Oh my God! Oh my God. God. Randy once again channeled what made him so good as the legend killer, turning it up even more. He was now more vicious and cunning, <gasps> while his promos were taken up a notch. That's Evolution legendary. In the past, and it was clear now more than ever before that Orton could hang with the very best in the business as a main oh, eventer. Oh yeah. At the start oh, of 2006, yeah. Orton set his sights on becoming a world champion. Good morning. Randy feuded with that year's Royal Rumble winner, Rey Mysterio. Nice. Eventually defeating Rey That's to how you dodge place it. in the World Heavyweight title match at WrestleMania 22 that also featured champion Kurt Angle. Orton caught some of the most heat of his career during this time by disrespecting the late Eddie Guerrero. Oh, now you don't do times. that. Eddie's down there in hell. Orton came up short at that WrestleMania so and continued his feud with Kurt Angle. Orton battled with a number of I would hate him personal there. issues during this era. From showing up late to shows due to excessive partying to defecating oh in wrestlers' God. bags. Him partying? Things came to a head when Orton was suspended for 60 days for smoking marijuana. Oh, shit. During this time off, Randy attended anger management classes to... Dude, like he looks so good physically. Like you would think that he doesn't party as much because he's so focused on his career and on sports, you know, and being a sportsman and performing, you cannot party and drink alcohol excessively. There is no way. So that is really hard to hear. To tackle his problems, by the summer of 2006, Orton was back on the Raw brand where he set out to kill his biggest name legend to date in the form of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Orton was brilliant here as he preyed on Hogan's daughter, Brooke, in order oh, to shit. end the Hulkster. <laughs> no. Orton lost to Hogan at SummerSlam in what turned out to be Hogan's final you ever WWE match. On screen, Orton bounced back tremendously following a difficult <gasps> first world title run, but outside of the ring, Randy began to lose the run of himself. It's a credit to Orton's natural ability and God-given talent that he was able to have such a brilliant 2005 Oh, here he has the most smuggy face. Despite experiencing such turmoil this hairstyle. behind the scenes, it's often been said that Orton doesn't truly know how great he is, and Randy being so good is why WWE continue to stick with him after all the missteps. And as we'll soon see, the moment <laughs> Orton was able to get himself together would be the moment he would reach the top Asa! of the industry as finally there was nothing holding Booyah. him back. Number three, Return of the Legend Killer, 2018 to 2021. After a short Ooh, hiatus this is the in the middle of 2018, ones. Orton returned by attacking Jeff Hardy. And I always think of 2018 like this feud, yesterday. We would begin it's crazy. to see the return of a more sadistic, bloodthirsty Orton. He would violently assault wrestlers by using weapons and making use of the environment around him. <laughs> No, 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 we are not watching that. Twice with a steel chair. Orton even removed Mysterio's mask and carried it around like a trophy. The ultimate way of disrespecting the mask This mask doesn't deserve to be respected. It deserves to be erased. Orton was back to his old menacing ways and it oh. wouldn't be long until he reintroduced hate another him. persona. But before that could happen, Love to Orton's hate him. with Kofi Kingston from 2009 would be revisited. This time with Kofi as the main eventer holding the WWE Championship. The feud featured numerous callbacks to their 2009 rivalry. Goes for the air to connects. Kofi Kingston jaw in face. Critical fashion to make it one-on-one -on -one with him and yes, Brian. Ultimately, we know the only time... <laughs> <laughs> Kofi Stop stating it. how Orton used his influence to hold Kingston Woo! down. Orton agreed, stating how he believed Kofi wasn't hey, ready to be fun. a main event star. Reverse this one? That's that not cool. I my influence to hold you back. 
You're damn right I did. It was great to see Potter uh -huh. Morton's past action Admitting behind the scenes it. being Easy. incorporated in his on-screen character, and this only continued as Randy transitioned back into the Legend Killer persona. Orton's feud with the returning Edge in 2020 was when Randy really began to tap into his promo ability to the point where they were at the very top level. Orton was Oof. doing some of his best work as a character while still being that sadistic, cruel viper. Add to that the return of Orton mm. as the Legend Killer, and you have Randy at his very best. Randy! No! with 2020 being one of his standout years. And this is despite the fact that for the vast majority of the year, there were no fans in attendance at shows. This made Orton's promos and the segments where he punt kicked numerous legends so much more eerie. The atmosphere and the tone made his words hit different. Fans really had to listen in. The way Randy would quietly whisper to the legends as they were down was tremendous. The fact that Orton <sighs> could still elicit such an emotional reaction despite there being no crowd is a testament to how strong his work mm -hmm. was during that period. True. Based on the year he'd been having, was it was no surprise that Orton for captured WWE, his first like... WWE Championship in three <clears throat> years by defeating Drew McIntyre inside Hell in a Cell. This feud really helped cement McIntyre as a main event star. The two men had some memorable promo exchanges while their matches were top draw. With such a strong 2020 nearly under his belt, it was a shame that things had to go downhill when Orton went up against The Fiend. The feud was so awful that thinking about it brings back what a host happened? of bad memories. Ah. It's not fair to pin any of the blame on the wrestlers in this case, as the material yeah. they had to work with was so bad. It would yeah. be hard for anyone to make it work. Props to the WWE for trying something different during the pandemic era, True. but most of it just fell flat. Rest assured, the feud with the oh, Fiend was the worst television cool. Orton has ever been involved in, and Good, was a sour end so to what was sad. otherwise a stellar three-year period like the for the Legend Killer. Awesome. Number two, Evolution and the birth of the Legend Killer, 2003 to 2004. Orton returned from injury in 2003, joining the ranks of Evolution as one of the faction's future stars alongside Batista. While Ric Flair was the wise legend and Triple H the current top star, Orton quickly yep. found his feet as a legend killer. Orton had first landed a job in the WWE because of his legendary father and grandfather. Oh. The business is in his blood. Yeah. Third generation superstar. He was now in a big time faction alongside a legend in Ric Flair. However, Orton made it his mission to disrespect and destroy those that came before him. He did this by attacking and literally spitting in the face of numerous Again? wrestling legends. Why does he like to spit Orton so much? Orton was the cocky, arrogant, and up-and-coming star Ew. that was destined for greatness. Countless legends fell at the hands of Orton as he continued to work his way up the ladder. Elevating the Intercontinental That's Championship slapped. along the way by holding the belt for 210 days. This run was special as it felt like a throwback to the days when the IC title was considered the workhorse belt that wrestlers would hold before going on to win the WWF Championship. Orton consistently put in some strong performances in the ring, wrestling a very smooth, methodical style with no wasted motion. A style in which Orton continued mm. to master the more experienced he became. Orton also established the RKO as his finishing move during this period. Yeah, it was finally. already a famous move, Amazing but Orton move. would soon take it to even greater heights. Uh -huh. I love it. Orton's first run as the legend finishing killer is moves. perhaps best Maybe there's a video where I could react to all finishing Cactus moves Jack by the Intercontinental Championship at That's Backlash 2004. This was a star-making match if there ever was one, as both men pulled out all the stops oh in a bona fide fight. Yeah, like classic. if you are Foley fighting with Mick Orton, Foley, just like he had made Triple H four years prior. Orton was still young, but the Foley match certainly put him on the map. Evolution gave Orton the platform to mix it up with Legends of the These Past. These are the hardest stars matches the to watch. Orton for me. shook off the rookie tag and used his third-generation lineage to fuel his cocky, egotistical character that Randy backed up by becoming the Legend Killer. Get a look at greatness. Orton's <laughs> sensational calendar year between the it summer of 2003 though, to 2004 on. convinced the higher-ups that Randy was ready to become world champion. And although we've since learned that Orton wasn't ready to be the champion in 2004, the fact that the company put the title on him so soon is a testament to how strong his original run as the Legend Killer was. Number one, <laughs> Legacy, 2008 to 2010. A broken yeah. collarbone suffered against Triple H at One Night Stand in 2008 halted Orton's insane momentum. But by the end of the year, Orton had formed a new group with other sons of legends, Cody Rhodes Cody. and yeah. Things had come full circle for Orton. He started out as a third generation young upstart where he was led by stars of the industry. Now Orton was the star and the leader of his own group with not one but two young wrestlers born from greatness. And it was Randy who would show Rhodes and DiBiase the way just as Ric Flair and Triple H had done for him. With Legacy right. by his side, Orton was back and ready to make <laughs> the biggest impact of his career thus the madness. far. It all began after a run-in with Stephanie McMahon left Vince demanding an apology from
from Orton, who refused. Then, after he was about to be fired, <gasps> Orton slapped and nearly kicked the chairman's head off his shoulders, giving Vince a legit concussion in the process. Actually? Orton immediately realized what had just happened, but the damage was done. Oh, Orton went on to no, the I guess Royal it's a Rumble story then. I don't the know. Main event of Dude, WrestleMania. What the he now had contractual power over the company. He demanded Stephanie fire him, stating that he couldn't be responsible for his actions due to having intermittent explosive disorder and therefore could sue the WWE. What is an intimate and explosive disorder? Diarrhea? He had a bad case of diarrhea? They terminated him. Orton was essentially bulletproof. He couldn't be fired and now had a built-in excuse to wreak even more havoc thanks to the disorder. Shane McMahon was out what to get disorder? revenge for what Orton had done to his father. But Shane O'Mac would also fall to the punt kick. Then with a hysterical Stephanie McMahon pleading for answers, Orton struck her down <laughs> with an RKO. No! Orton had already made it personal with the immediate McMahon family, but after RKOing Stephanie, Randy now had to deal with Steph's husband, Triple H. <gasps> Hunter oh, and yeah. Stephanie hadn't been established as husband and wife on television since 2002, meaning Orton had now made things so personal that in storyline, there was no ignoring the torment Randy was causing to the McMahons and their loved ones. There was no limit to no. the length this version Ew. of Orton would- Ew. Ew. You did not just kiss her. You did not just do that. What? No, 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 no. How? How would you watch this and be fine? Doesn't that like give you some like bleh, feelings? Like vomiting right now? Like what? Uh, go to. And if this was wiping out non wrestlers and now even women, Randy would do it. Orton even tried okay, to. Okay, Randy, do, I do not team. like that version of you. Have historically been the evil rulers who made their enemies' lives a living hell. It speaks to just how sick of a character Orton was that he could actually get the fans to Sheesh. sympathize with a family that had done so many terrible things. Triple yeah. H sought revenge True by that. making it personal with <laughs> Orton's family as oh. the game broke into <gasps> Orton's home in a classic Raw segment. <laughs> Damn, his home is really not homey. The build There's to nothing their match at WrestleMania 25 <laughs> was so thrilling that the eventual bout itself had a lot to live up to. This guy put it in the next week. But what it didn't help that their clash was completely overshadowed by the sensational Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels oh, match yeah. that went on before it. It was impossible yeah. to follow, despite how awesome Orton and Triple H. Why would they do that? Him. Why would you do you put you put Undertaker at the end, you guys? You never, you never put Undertaker in the middle or at the beginning, like. Crazy. In the end, their match fell flat, but fans will also remember how Orton terrorized the McMahons. After WrestleMania, Orton regained the WWE Championship and he was now ready to resume his feud with John Cena. That ended prematurely the year. Oh, prior. hi, John this Cena. Time, yeah. Orton walked John into Cena's SummerSlam back. as the champion, as opposed to the challenger, where he would finally get his singles win over Cena. Their feud continued throughout the fall with the two men trading title <laughs> victories, starting with the awesome I Quit match at Breaking Point. I quit, I quit. I did it. And then a match inside he Hell in a Cell. The feud culminated in a one-hour Iron Man match at Bragging Rights. Oh. John Cena won with the <laughs> stipulation being that move. Orton <laughs> couldn't challenge for the WWE Championship again until Cena lost it. As a result, Orton stepped out of the title picture to feud with Kofi Kingston. The oh, feud hi, Kofi. helped elevate Kingston. However, the WWE failed to follow up on his newfound momentum. The moment where Orton back and yelled out stupid, that. stupid to Kofi stupid. in the middle of the ring signaled the end of Kingston's push. In 2010, cracks began to form in Legacy as Orton began to transition oh. Into telling baby face. The group had shown minor signs of dissension in the past, but now there was no doubt that the faction was on the rocks. <laughs> this was clear when Cody. Damn! <laughs> I felt that. I felt that. Cody Rose cost Orton a chance to regain the WWE title at the Royal Rumble. <laughs> By getting Randy DQ'd after Rose hit Sheamus in view of the referee, Rose and DiBiase officially turned on Orton at the Elimination Chamber, setting up a triple threat match at WrestleMania 26. Crossroads. Orton picked up the win with a punt kick and RKO combo on both men. Orton was now a popular babyface for the first time in five years. This was interesting given he had just come off the most evil heel run of his career. Sure, he yeah. was the most hated heel in wrestling in 2009, but his work was so Definitely. amazing that it led to the fans wanting to cheer Orton. Throughout Orton's illustrious yeah. Hall of Fame career, That's the 2009 thing about Orton. gave us the greatest version of Randy Orton. It was the culmination of a spectacular story arc that had been building for some time and will ultimately go down as Orton's very best work. 
Randy Orton was destined to follow in his family's footsteps, becoming a third generation genetically gifted wrestler with an inherent ability that was further developed and built upon, allowing Orton to become an era defining generational talent who is celebrated by fans and greatly respected by his peers. Orton quickly rose through the ranks, starting out as an upstart rookie before becoming a legend killer, then a viper, and now a legend in his own right. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, oh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give cool it a like video. and subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this I one, really be sure to check it. out our video where we rank I mean... the 12 greatest versions of Triple <laughs> Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. I did enjoy the video, except those moments where I was about to like, you know, like other than that, the video was awesome and it was so well made. It went back and forth with these worst to best versions, but it kept with the storytelling. So it was so easy for me who don't know a lot about Randy Orton's biography or career or the whole journey, uh, the whole the whole advancement. I would say that it was so well made that I understood everything literally everything and it's like right now in my mind i love it i'm so happy that i know way more right now about randy orton than before especially that he is a big deal still in wwe and i mention this all the time whenever randy orton is in the mix of the, the whole stories i'm like dude this guy deserves more and deserves better like he has been shadowed down by cody by others right now which i understand they they deserve it as well and randy had a whole career to celebrate his existence in wwe but the fact that we don't have him for so many years left, I just want WWE to use him more. You know, like, I, I don't know. I feel like he deserves another championship on the way. And the whole feud with Logan Paul might be the case. Or maybe there is a new thing coming next. Let me know in the comment down below. What do you know? What do you think about Randy? Orton and what do you think is the future for him what story are we gonna be following about him and what are the plans for wwe and randy orton that is it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more thank you so much for watching guys have a wonderful day and see you tomorrow with a brand new video bye